Crafty Josephine here. I'm back today, and today we're going to do something a little bit different than we've done in the past. I've decided um, I just wanted to break it up a little bit, and this time I'm going to try making a door hanger. And I've never done that before, so we'll see how this goes. Um, but I made this uh, little drawing with pastels about a year ago, and I just thought it was so cute. So I think I'm going to try to make a door hanger that'll look roughly like this one here. And I've started drawing out the pattern for him. And mine's pretty rough, but I um, make these videos before I make your pattern. So if there's anything wrong with this pattern, don't worry, yours will be fixed. Um, but you can see that I'm going to go ahead and place his body on the fold. I'm going to make mine out of felt. It's going to go um, on my front door, but I have a storm door, so I know it's not going to get wet. Um, but if yours might get wet, then you might want to, you know, choose a different fabric. And then two mittens, um, and that will also... Felt or fleece, I haven't decided on that one yet. Probably cut my nose out of felt, and then uh, two shoes, I think, also out of felt or fleece. <laughs> All right, so I'll go ahead and get started on that. You can see I accidentally um, drew my patterns on top of each other, but again, yours will be fixed, so no worries. So you can see he's holding this banner, and I put uh, green stripes on that fabric. I don't have any fabric like that, so I um, did find this fabric. I believe it was last year at Joann's, um, and I just really like it. It just feels very uh, St. Patrick's Day to me, so I think I'll probably be using this for my pattern, uh, my pattern, but um, my banner. Oh, my goodness. Um, but I'm going to cut that out a little bit later. Also, uh, you can see that I have his head just being perfectly round. He's wearing this hat. Um, I'm going to let his whole body be the green felt and that will look like this back part of the hat right here but then I'm going to cut out one more piece of felt that will be that um, brim of the hat right there and that will go on top for a little bit of um, depth. So I will make those patterns later as well. Alright so I'm going to start cutting out my pattern pieces. And guess what? I should have just cut two of these because <laughs> I need two. So I'll cut another one. His mittens. I have this um, scarf that I had used on a wintertime gnome and I've used most of the top side of the scarf up. I only have a little bit left you can see um, but I have all this of the back of the scarf that's just um, black and I think you can kind of see the texture there and I thought that would be cute for the mittens so I'm going to go ahead and use that I think if I fold it, there we go. I think that should be, yeah, that'll be all right. So I'm going to do something a little different than I usually do for this. Um, I thought. Hopefully this is going to take it up a notch, but I don't know. I'm going to use felt for my shoes, but I decided I wanted them to have a little bit of shininess to them. So I bought this stuff a while back, um, Vinyl Fuse, and I've tested it out on a couple fabrics, but I've never actually like really used it in a project, so I think I'm going to use it for this one. Um, and it you know comes with the directions, and you just iron it onto your fabric, and then you can cut your um, pattern out. And sew it, and I'm, I'm sure it you know dulls your needle a little bit quicker. But um, I think I'll do that so that I can have um, shiny gnome shoes. All right, let's get over to the iron then. All right, so I'm on my ironing board now, and I cut a little bit of this 
uh, vinyl fuse from the roll. Now the directions say that you should, um, you know, uh, pre-wash your fabric and all that, probably worrying about shrinkage, but um, we don't need to worry about that because I'm not going to wash my leprechaun gnome or his shoes, so I'm not going to worry about washing my felt. Um, but what you do is you peel the backing. And like I said, I've already cut from this some, that's why there's that little square missing. And the side that, that was touching the paper, the side that goes down, it's a little bit tacky. I think I'm going to do the shoes with this. And I also think that I might do um, the lettering on the banner. And also there's a ribbon on the gnome's hat that I think I will do with this too to make that shiny as well. So then you take this piece of paper that you peeled off and you put it back down on top of the vinyl and your iron's supposed to be on a medium setting. Mine doesn't say, you know, low, high, medium, but wool is about in the middle, so I'm going to give that a shot. And then let's see how long it says to do this for. Um... It says about eight seconds. And it says, you know, to be careful not to touch your iron to the fuse. I imagine it would probably stick to it, so you just want to be careful not to get it right on that stuff. Over. And iron the back for four seconds. You know, I'm not even sure if you're supposed to iron felt. <laughs> Don't do it for very long. How about that? I have a feeling you're not supposed to, so I'm definitely not going to hold it very long. Don't want it to melt. So I'm pretty pleased with it, but I don't know what you can see on camera there. There are spots that look a little bit blotchy. So I think I might hold it down just a little bit longer there. So hopefully you can see some of the shininess there on camera. There you can at least see the difference there. So I think this will be nice for his shoes and some other pieces of the gnome. So, alright. Alright, so I've got the vinyl fuse on my felt and I'm going to go ahead and trace the patterns for um, the boots. Um, on here and I'm gonna it says to cut two on doubled fabric I'm just gonna cut four on single fabric but you know you do whatever you want to do um, and I could flip it over and then use my chalk on the back but I found that I can see on this it may not show up great on camera um, but I can see the sharpie marker on here so I'm gonna go ahead and just do it on the front side so that I know where the vinyl fuse is because if I flip it over obviously it's a bit of a mystery and I would be kind of guessing as I drew. Alright, so I have my shoes pinned together and the shiny sides are together, right sides together. 
um, and I'm just going to go ahead and sew and I'm going to leave the top portion of the shoe open because I'm going to stuff it later and it'll get sewn closed when it gets attached to the body. Alright, so I'm going to change um, my technique for the mittens and the shoes. And I'll explain why, and maybe it makes sense, and maybe it doesn't. You guys can let me know in the comments. Um, the, the boots are going to be sewn in, and they're basically going to be sewn shut with the body. And so they're going to be a little bit floppy from the body. But I don't want my mittens to be real floppy from the arms, because they're going to be holding that banner. And I'm just afraid if I make them floppy, then they're just going to hang down. So um, I'm going to sew up the outsides of these, but then I'm going to sew them to the sleeve. And it probably would be easier if I just sewed them to the sleeve first, but then I feel like I'd have to go back and forth with my thread colors, and I'm much too lazy to do that. Um, so I'm going to try doing it this way, and I might kick myself later, but I'm just going to try to leave that little edge there so that I can sew to the sleeves in a little bit and not have to change back and forth to green and black thread. Um, maybe this will make more sense later. And maybe I'm completely wrong. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, so I did make a mistake. Look at that. My thumb and my mitten is right side out, but clearly this is not what I wanted here, so I'm going to have to rip these apart. <sighs> Guess who just spent more time ripping pieces apart than she would have changing thread colors? Me! Hopefully you won't make the same mistakes that I did. All right. <laughs> here goes try number two. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So I did one mitten correctly, so, <laughs> so now I'm going to do the other one, and I'll just show you, hopefully you'll be able to see. So I have my mitten, and it's still turned with the right sides facing together, it's sewn together, and then I just have that little bit at the edge there that I can fold and sew to the sleeve. So i got to do right sides together, and I'll do each side of the sleeve separately which is tricky. And again, this is where I got in trouble because I made this decision to do this so that I wouldn't have to switch my thread colors. And now I'm thinking I should have <laughs> just done that, but oh well. Powering through. Okay. So now you can see I'm going to go around with green and see where the mitten is, and then I can go around with green. What I was trying to avoid doing was having to switch to black to go around this mitten and then go to green to switch to that, um, but it probably would have been easier just to do that. <laughs> but anyways, we made it through. Okay, so I'm going to start sewing up the body here pretty soon, uh, but what I want to do first is get these shoes put inside. And so um, they're, they're right side out, but we're going to put them into the body in between the two layers, and we're going to sew them so that when we turn it back side out, or I should say right sides out, that they'll flip out. Um, I'm spacing mine, I don't know, maybe like an inch apart down at the bottom, but you know, obviously that's up to you how 
far apart you want the feet to be. You could have them right next to each other if you wanted or really far apart. Whatever you think will look good. And of course trying to get through all these layers plus the vinyl fuse with the pin is unbelievably hard. Now we have to leave some spot open on the body so that we can stuff it later and, uh, I'll, and then we'll hand sew that close. I think I'm going to choose maybe right there or under one of the armpits there to be the spot where I'm going to hand sew and stuff my gnomes. So um, I think I'll start sewing over here. And I'm just going to make sure that I only catch my feet where I want to and that I don't sew through them. Just kind of push them in there so they stay out of the way. We're sewing this guy up. I'll just hit So, uh, like I said, I sewed my mittens together before because I didn't want to have to switch back to black when I got to this spot. Um, but that's always an option. You could have sewn the sleeve and the mitten together first and then gone and switched back to black, done the mitten and gone around. Um, since I've already got the mitten sewn to the sleeve, I'm just going to go ahead and sew as close to the edge here as I can and back tack. And then I'm just going to move over the other side here. And try to get as close to this edge as I can. And this very well may not have been the best way to do this, but it's the way I chose and I hope it's going to turn out okay once we get it all turned right side out. So he's turned right side out, and I'm just going to start stuffing him. I'm going to try to get to that mitten first, because I think that's going to be the hardest parts to get to. So I just thought I'd mention, you know, a couple of the things I'm debating right now and have been debating since I decided I was going to do this is, um, you know, whether I should use the different materials for effect or if I would just be better off going all with the same. Uh, what I mean by that is like these mittens, should I have just done felt mittens like I did with the body or was it worth it to kind of get that mitteny effect by using the back of that scarf that I had? Same thing with the shoes. Should I have just stuck with felt, or is it worth it to do the shininess with these shoes? You know, and I could have, of course, if I really wanted shininess, I could have used satin or something like that, but I wanted to use what I had on hand. And I don't have any black satin. What do you guys think? Would you just stick with felt all the way, or add those details? Do they add to it or take away from it? Okay, so um, I've mostly finished stuffing him, and I just, um, I'll probably add a little bit more there near the opening, but I'm just going to go ahead and start sewing up, uh, hand sewing up my opening, and then I'll add a little bit more as I get closer to the end. Um, but I just wanted to mention, when you stuff, remember that he's going to be holding a banner, and it's just a fabric banner, so it's not super heavy or anything, but you just want to do a really good job, and I'll even add more of making um, 
those arms stuffed really full and then and the mittens and all that so that his arms will stay up and like I said I was trying to avoid them flopping down um, when he's holding the banner I even debated whether I wanted to add like maybe a piece of wire on the inside to help hold him up or a really thin dowel going across um, as an option to help keep that really strong but I think if I stuff some more even after I've sewn a little bit here that they should be strong enough but that's just something to consider and I'm just doing the ladder stitch here Okay, so now I'm getting paranoid that the arms are going to sag more. So I went ahead and just cut. Um, I had some leftover dowel from a different project. And I just cut it a little bit shorter on each end um, than what I need. Just to give a little bit of extra stability. Ooh, let's see if I can get this in there. Good thing the mittens stretch, right? There we go. And that just makes me feel more confident that the arms are going to stay up nice and hold the banner. Okay. Uh, so I think I've gotten it stuffed as much as I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep hand stitching around through the armpit area here. Okay, so I've got uh, some thread doubled up. You definitely want it to be strong when you're gathering the nose because um, this gathering stitch is really going to put a lot of pressure on the thread. In fact, um, if you have embroidery floss in the color of your nose, it might be smart to go that way. So uh, you just start and you can make pretty big stitches going all the way around. I'd say about a quarter inch from the edge. And you can usually do, you know, five or six stitches at a time without any problem. so we can see. Alright, so I've pulled out my orange fur and I just laid uh, the gnome body on top of it to try to get an idea of about how big I wanted it. Um, you know, I'm cutting from a piece of fur that's already been cut from already. and um, So I want it that wide. And I'm going to make it pretty wide at the bottom with the idea that if I want to slim it down some more I can later. Um, but I just don't want to go too small. So I'm actually stuck in my craft room right now. I know. Terrible, right? Um, because my husband is working on the stairs and I can't go upstairs to get my glue gun. So I decided to work on making the rest of the patterns for the gnome. Or at least most of the rest of the patterns. Um, so this is going to be my banner shape, and I'm going to go ahead and cut that out and start working on that. So I have been doing a little bit of this off camera because I'm trying to figure out what I want to do and I don't want to make you guys sit through me going through that process. Um, but I think I want to do a gold buckle um, on the ribbon that's going to go on his hat. So I was cutting that out of this felt um, that you can get at Hobby Lobby. Um, they sell it by the sheet but then they also sell it, um, they have ribbon back in the fabric department and you can get it on a roll over there and sometimes those rolls go 50% off but the felt goes on sale too so either way you'll be fine. Um, but anyway so I cut that out and I'll have a pattern for that. 
but I wanted to show you um, something that I've started doing when I cut out this felt is you know you have that white edge and it's small but it's a little bit annoying to look at when um, you know you make a nice craft project and then you got that rough edge there so what I did was I bought a gold sharpie and I use it on the edges just to make that white edge not stand out so much anymore um, if you had gold paint and you had the patience to go around you know just real lightly with some gold paint that's an option or you can just leave it if you want to as well it's you know it's not gonna kill anything to leave it white it's kind of out of focus isn't it here is that better So I've cut the brim of the hat out. I cut two pieces of that. And then this is going to be my ribbon, which is some more of that felt with the vinyl fuse on it. And this will just fit right through there. Hopefully without me tearing it. And I was reunited <laughs> with my glue gun. So that makes me happy. So I think I'll just start by gluing my beard down. Because I should say the beard. And I cleaned up that bottom edge a little bit there with my scissors. I'm going to trim this down so it's not quite so wide. Okay, so while I will be supplying the patterns for you guys, actually placing the things on the gnome is going to be up to you. So I'm just going to tell you a couple of things um, that I'm thinking about. One is that um, this ribbon is supposed to be further back in space <laughs> than this trim part here. Um, but at the same time, I don't want this buckle to be covered by the front. Um, so I, I still want that buckle there. So what I'm going to do is try as best I can to cover the bottom of this black edge with the green felt, but leave the gold on top of the brim, even though that's not really where it would be. I think it just looks best that way. Um, so what I'm going to do is I think glue the black piece first and then put my brim. Something to keep in mind is that um, you probably want your brim to be above your arms just so it sticks out as being a bowler hat. <laughs> you know, otherwise it just looks like more of the arms maybe. So I'm going to try to push that up there some. Covering the edges of my beard. Hopefully, hopefully. Sort of that edge is a little low. Just going to have to work with it. Okay, so like I said, I think I'm going to glue down the black part first. 
and then try to cover with the green. And I'm not going to do a perfect job gluing it yet, just in case I need to move the buckle or need to move it down or up a little bit, that I don't have a ton of glue that I have to work against. Just enough to be able to work with it. So I know a lot of um, leprechauns have that top hat, but I saw one with this bowler hat and I just thought that was so cute. So that's the way I decided to go, just to do something a little bit different. And I'm not going to push too hard with that glue. I probably shouldn't have put so much on because I just don't want it to show through that there's a big glue glob there. So I probably should use less glue. I'll try to do that going forward. <laughs> That's a little better anyways. Maybe I can move this if it's not centered. Glue that nose on. I know some people like to have their hats cover the nose a little bit. You can certainly peel that up and put it on the nose a little if that's how you prefer it. I'm good with it covering the hat a little. Okay, so I want to start putting my banner together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue each piece. I've decided my banner will be made out of twine and I'm going to glue each piece of the banner uh, folding over that edge there. But I want the, the uh, twine to still be able to move loose back and forth so I want to be careful and, and hopefully I won't mess this up so that when I fold it over I'm not really getting the twine with the glue. So that's the goal. We'll see how, how this works. So far so good, I think. Now that I've gotten all my banner backings out, I'm going to go ahead and glue on the letters. So this was just uh, letters that I, you know, hand drew, but if you wanted, you could always print off some letters from your computer and trace those, or if you have a Cricut machine, you could, you know, probably use one of the fonts you have from there. I want to go ahead and attach a little four-leaf clover to his hat. So what I'm going to do here is just trace a little clover on the same color felt that his hat and body were made out of. You could do a different shade of green if you wanted. So uh, to attach your clover to the hat. You could use some green floral wire, um, but I had real handy um, just a piece of green wire from some faux flower, uh, faux flower, faux <laughs> flowers that I had for Valentine's Day. Um, I had taken the flowers off to use for a project and this I had left so I just cut a piece of this off. Um, so that's always an option if you don't have any floral wire. And then what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue on the back 
I'm going to put the wire in that. And then I'm going to, I just cut like a little square of felt just to hold it together and let that dry. And then I'm going to tuck that in there. It's probably still a little bit longer than I wanted it. But I figured cut it too long and I can always cut it down. So let's see, how far do I want it? I'm going to try there and see how that works. I think I like that. It's getting tucked behind this black ribbon, so if I don't like where it is, I could tear it out and move it. So the next thing I want to do is attach his banner to him. And what I'm going to do, and there's so many different ways you could do this, but uh, what I'll do is just tie a knot here, really just to try to create a little more volume, since the rope is so skinny. And I'm going to stitch this to the back of his hand. You could glue it, absolutely. Um, you could really probably just tie the twine or whatever string or whatever you're using around his hand. Um, I'm just choosing to stitch. But I just wanted to show you what I'm going to use to hang it. I just cut myself a little strip of felt uh, the same color and I'm just going to put some glue on the edges. Oops. It's a gun string. Oh my goodness. There we go. Now I'm going to put it near the top. Because if I hung it down here, then when he's hanging, he's going to kind of lean forward. So this way, put it near the head, and it shouldn't lean too far forward from whatever I choose to hang it from. I haven't decided yet if I should hang it from my door, or I have a hutch that I sometimes like to hang some things off the um, knobs for the upper cabinet part. So I have to decide on that. Um, but now that I have this loop here, what I can use is a piece of pipe cleaner that I can shove through here and I could attach this to the wall. I could use ribbon if I wanted to use ribbon or make a pretty bow at the top. Um, but you know, I can just make a loop and then I can hang it from this or um, I might even use fishing line to go through this if I hang it from my front door because I won't want anybody to see, you know, it's a pretty long hanger to my wreath hanger so I could do that to kind of disguise um, but so lots of options of, of ways to hang it all right well I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did please like and subscribe uh, I love reading comments and responding to those so please feel free to do so and uh, see you guys soon